Hi guys and welcome back to Thai TV. I'm Nicholas Bauer and uh, today we're going to tie this little bad boy here. This is a mixture of a bulkhead and a very famous spin fishing lure called Mira's Mouse. So for the last uh, one and a half, two years I've been working a lot with flies that are pushing a lot of water. That's a problem we have when competing with spin fishing guys is that their bait is pushing a lot of water and flies are in general very very quiet. The tails are definitely doing a lot of job and also rattles and stuff can increase that but having flies that are pushing a lot of water is usually a very good key for catching big fish. This pattern is um, basically bucktail and flash and with a dragon tail behind it. Uh, what we're going to tie it, we're going to use a lot of bucktail, we're going to reverse tie it, we're going to hollow tie it and then we're going to uh, make kind of a bu bulkhead in the front but the whole magic comes with this foam disc here that is a very straight surface that we're going to coat with um, Gulf uh, flex glue here. It's a, it's a flexible UV glue which uh, makes this a little bit, little bit stiffer but uh, a little bit heavier but make that surface really straight and creates a lot of water pressure here. And when you fish this just below the surface you're gonna see a big wake behind the fly and this fly is awesome in the water. So a lot of water pressure uh, creates a lot of sound in the water catches a lot of big fish. So here we go. So first, uh, we're going to tie this fly on a Bauer Pike rig. This is just a normal rig. Um, if you don't know, know how to tie it, you can click on the link below here, or here, or here, or Pontus, where? Here? Here? Right in the top right corner. Top right corner here? Yep. Top right? Okay. But in any case, um, uh, what I've done here, this is a single strand titanium wire. We call it a Bauer Pike wire. It's a 55 pound single strand titanium. Uh, we're going to use a partridge. C4. Uh, this is a red color. I like it because it's just a little bit of contrast in the back. This is size 1. And then we're going to use a universal predator, size 60. This is the X version, so it's a little bit heavier. Uh, we're going to have a lot of bucktail on this fly, and we're also going to have a foam disc in the front here. So using a little bit heavier wire is not a bad thing at all. And also, when you're fishing these flies a little bit higher up in the surface, over quite deep water, you're going to have a lot of big fish coming up really, really aggressively to take these. So you don't want to be in too light wire. So put this in one in the device. Um, you also want to make sure when you make these rigs that you have the space enough here when you go through with the titanium wire so you can get your fast attach or whatever snap you want to have to connect to the fly line. But make sure you have the space there. So we're going to go uh, a little super glue in the back here, where we, where we get the thread onto the hook. As normal, I'm tying with the Textream 100 denier. It's a Dyneema thread, very strong. And actually, when you're using bucktail like this, you could actually go even to a heavier version. There's a 150 denier version if you are pulling the thread off. But if you're a little bit careful, you don't need to do that. Then we're going to use bucktail. And, uh, I've used this in a lot of videos, so you basically know that the, the further down you go to the center of the tail here, the more air the hair contains. So we're going to try to find as long and good bucktail as possible. That contains a lot of air. Uh, we're going to use quite a lot of bucktail. Um, and quite long, if you can find it. This is how the fly looks when it's just brand new, when it's just tied straight from the vise. And this is how it looks when you have caught, you know, 100 fish on it. So you don't you need to be you need to be a little bit bigger because they're going to decrease uh, after catching a lot of fish and also when the water is uh, taking the turn on the fly. Get all those short fibers away from the bucktail. Uh, if they're very very straight here, you can just taper them a little bit, but this has a nice flare to it. So we're just going to take that with your left hand. Try to get the fibers evenly around the hook. Make one, two turns, and then you pull. And then with a straight bobbin, you kind of put a lot of tension to the thread. Not too much thread, but not too much strength, but just enough so you can really get this attached to the hook. So this is going to be just slightly longer than uh, the hook and the fast attach here. Then you just take your your needle here, your dubbing needle, and you go around, make sure that there's no fibers that are tangled. 
you want to have that nice flare so you get a lot of volume in the back. You don't want a hollow tie uh, in the back because then the flashable has a tendency to tangle around the, the rig, so, so don't do that. I like to use these hair clamps just to get the material out of, out of the way. We're going to continue working a few thread wraps around this. Take your scissor and just as neat as possible try to cut all these small fibers away here. Like that. We're going to do a, a rainbow color here. Um, because I think it's a really cool pattern and also been fishing uh, quite a lot lately in, in uh, lakes and rivers where they stock with rainbow and a lot of these big pike, the rainbow are quite high up in the surface so the pike is looking up towards the surface a lot and these patterns are really really good to fish like that. Now we're going to do um, uh, spread some flashable around that and uh, I like to do run these with uh, magnum flashable because it doesn't tangle, we don't have to use too much flashable but still we get a lot of attention to it. This actually has, uh, as you can see here, has some flashable that's glow in the dark. Um, so we're gonna run some mirage and some glow in the dark in wide. Uh, it actually, when the light starts to fade, uh, those fibers attract light and it keeps the fly glowing a little bit longer and it looks really cool in the water and it's also working really well. So this is uh, Hedron's uh, Magnum Flashable, which uh, this is a mixture of pearl and uh, glow in the dark actually. It's really good stuff. We gotta use like, we actually always, I always take too many. So let's see if I do that this time too. So we have around 15 strands put them on the table. We're gonna run a few strands of Magnum Mirage just to get that extra flash. It's really, really bright. It looks really cool. Put them together on the table. Put them in your hand, just as normal again. Take a comb, the wide side. Just go through them a little bit so they make a nice mixture. Fold them together so they're quite even. Cut them into two pieces. I like to taper both ends before I put them on the table because I like to run these as two separate bunches. So that's the first one. We're going to use that in the second bucktail. And this one we're going to use in the tail. So, so we have a nice mixture there. Uh, half of this is uh, glow in the dark, so it makes a really nice contrast when the when you have very low light condition or uh, when you're fishing a little bit later in the afternoon in the night. You can tie this in uh, s numerous of, of uh, times, you can do one or two, but I like to tie these flies quite fast uh, because there's so much bulkiness, there's so much flashable and there's so much hairs in it, so you don't have to tie them that nice, you know, it can be quite sloppy with this. So. Not too long fibers, because they are going to interfere with the tail. So you basically want to have the longest fibers should be just a little bit longer than the snap here. So try to get them with your left hand. Make one turn, so we secure them into the short fibers of the bucktail. Make sure that they are somehow spread a little bit even around it. Make a few turns and then fold the fibers back. Then I don't usually fold them all together. I kind of go a few at, at a time so we get a little bit nicer, even spread to it if I can. Ooh. Almost breaking the thread here. So, so, we take the clamp off here, so we can have a quite good spread. We can see that most of these are just a little bit longer here. We might need to cut one or two of these away, but um, just want to have them slightly tapered and uh, not interfering with that tail too much. 
So we're done with that. Take that hair clamp again. Put some super glue over the thread wraps here. Just so we have a strong and durable fly. Then we're gonna run some uh, body material. This is Textream. It's um, super long hair holographic. This is a pearl with a light pink in it. Usually uh, it's, you shouldn't cut this off. You should put it in the hand hole so you don't waste any material, but for sure we're going to do it like this. Take maybe 25 centimeters. Take the fibers pointing towards the uh, floor. Tie it in in, a, in an angle towards the hook. And then we want to have, definitely when you tie this the first time, make a little bit more space because if you get this uh, foam disc here to be too far against the hook eye, it has a tendency to break loose after like 50 fish or something like that. So, so try to have, spa have the space so you can really push this uh, disc down so you can really get it a good epoxy glue to it because otherwise you can see this one has a lot of fish on it and it actually after like 50 fish it broke off. It still works but it had a little bit too little space in the beginning so leave a good centimeter here. Then we're just gonna go wrapping this towards the front here with uh, fairly tight thread wraps or chenille wraps in this case. Make sure you Fold the material with your left hand the whole time when you go forward. And then keeping the tension to the material the whole time so you don't lose any, um, any wraps. This is something that will break off eventually. Uh, but for the last, for the first like 30, 40 fish, it will stay on the body. So now I have a, like a, a finger or a centimeter, a good centimeter of space here. I think you should have that when you start tying these. So you just secure this material in place here. Throw it in the trash bin. Take a few turns. And then we're going to secure this with some glue again here. So we have the tail ready, we have the body ready, and now we're going to go for the first collar. And um, the first one I hollow tie, so we're going to tie it forward, and then we're going to reverse it, just to not have too many stacks of bucktail there, because then the fly is just going to be heavier and heavier. So I want that first one to keep the volume, but then I want to build up the bulkiness doing the, the second, two bulk, uh, second two bunches of bucktail. We're going to tie that normal. So. Nice and long bucktail. I'm gonna run uh, white here uh, from the uh, furthest down to the animal here, so we get a lot of air inside the fibers again. Take the short fibers out just like normal. We're gonna make sure that these are nice and tidy here. You don't want to have these longer than the tail, but it usually doesn't happen. But if you are running a new bucktail, so make sure that these tips here are not longer than the tail because you're gonna have a very funny looking fly in that case. So take this, first in your right hand and in left hand, compress it around the hook, have a good tension in your left hand, go one, two turns, make one pull and then continue working around this. Make sure that the bucktail is flared around the whole hook. Nice and uh, even. Work with the thread a little bit back and forward here so you really have a strong base. Take another hair clamp. I like to do this because I think it's just so easy to make nice and, and neat flies. Just cut out most of the material here. Of course you can leave this, uh, but I'm trying to save weight on the fly so it becomes as easy to cast as possible, but still as much bulkiness as possible. So I'm happy with that. Make sure it's tight. Use a reverse tool. Uh, this is a hollow um, tool, but you can use any pen or whatever you want to. 
is the tube, so you can lift the bucktail. Can I get that, uh, whatever tool you have to, to push the bucktail over. Just make it one pull, so you get all the material in one good pull. Kind of work with your fingers a little bit, so you compress it down a little bit, so it gets that first angle. Then, now you're going to have your thread coming like two millimeters inside this bunch, so you want to make sure that you don't go like this. You want to pull this thread to the right and then start building up a little bit of a collar here to support this bucktail so it doesn't stand straight up like this. So now it has that angle that I want. So I'm happy with that. We can take that hair clamp off and then we're going to attach this to this. So this is to build up bulkiness um, but not to add too much weight to it. Once again, drop a super glue. Just to make sure that this is a strong and durable fly. So now we're going to run the second bunch of, of the same flash above we had in the tail. Uh, just to be able to create that kind of white and light tan belly on the rainbow. Same again here, try to tie it in. In the tail we do kind of 50-50, so it's basically that the whole time here. Uh, here you can also do it in, in numerous bunches if you want to, but I like to just try to do it in one. Get the thread around it, secure it. We have it quite nice, evenly spread. I just like to pull this a little bit here, so they get a little bit open. And then I use the same tool again to push that fibers over. And it's very simple to get them nice and evenly around. And then you make sure it's nice, you just secure it with a few thread wraps. Um, and then we have that kind of nice and even spread about this. We get this really cool glow-in-the-dark feeling to it. And also it's a fluorescent white bucktail, so it actually um, reflects the lights really good. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to go with the hair clamp again. I'll drop a super glue because the thread is uh, it's a non-wax thread so it has a tendency to kind of slide away from the fibers otherwise so so uh, make sure you glue it so now we can do the last two bunches so it's going to be a pink one and it's going to be an olive one so you want to kind of push the the olive one first uh, the pink one first here quite tight to this one and the olive one and then you need to save at least two to three millimeters. We're going to cut a disc from this special really hard foam and that's going to be around two millimeters so we need to have that at least two millimeters of space here so we don't run out of space. So pink, this is a normal pink, it's quite bright so we're going to take a nice solid bunch of that just uh, as normal, we take all the short fibers away from the material. I don't want those because it's just going to make a little bit fuss for you when you are creating these. And now we want to actually com compare to what we have done previously when we tried with bucktail. We want to save this this length here. So we're going to do around one and a half to two centimeters of material. We're going to tie this in because this is going to be tied. Uh, we're going to fold this back and we're going to save that so we get that bulky feeling to it. So I'm going to run up here, I'm going to do, take that around the fly, I'm going to go one, two, and then we're going to start pulling this. So we're going to make sure that this is nice and evenly spread all around it. We're going to work towards the hook eye with a few thread wraps like this. Um, happy with that. So this is actually the start of a bulkhead, um, which um, one of my huge inspirations, uh, Bob Popovich from the USA, uh, has started and, and uh, done to a really big thing. And it's, it's a really, really good way to push water. I just wanted them to increase the water pressure a lot with keeping this disc onto it. So check him out. He's a great guy and ties awesome flies. Um, so pink is done, now we're going to create more flashable to this. So 
What I think is important when you tie this, I don't want to have any flashable in the last bucktail bunch. So we're going to run we're going to run all the pink and also the olive flashable that's going to be in the last one. We're going to create we're going to push this over the pink here. So we're actually going to run olive flashable in this one too. But first we're going to start with a nice mixture of different pink ones. So this is a magnum one here and this is a light pink. We're going to do some fuchsia. So it's a little bit darker pink here. A few strands. And then there's a new color that are just out. So it's really cool. This is uh, like a mirage, but based on a red flashable. So we have three different ones, uh, all the same tones, but just uh, slightly different. Really cool mixture. So we're just going to make them blend together a little bit. Here you actually just need to take two or three strands. As you can see I have for two flies here. Just have to live with that. We're basically probably just going to use one of this, so not going to taper the other one. We'll save that for the next one. So, nice mixture. And we're going to tie that the same way. So we're going to spread it evenly around. Tie it in roughly 50-50. One thread wrap around here. Try to spread it somehow evenly around this. Fold these flashable fibers a little bit up here so we can go in with the reverse tool and push them over. Spread them over. See if I have them. You can always kind of give them a little bit help here by pulling them around a little bit. Something like that. So now the first bunch is there. Gonna just make a few thread wraps again. Take that hair clamp over again. And now we're gonna run we're gonna run the olive ones too. Keep those for the next one. Um, that's gonna be kind of prepared for the for the last bunch of bucktails. So we're gonna go four or five strands of uh, magnum flashable in holographic olive. Really nice color. Fold that together. Cut them into two or into half. Taper all the ends. Just like normal. And we're gonna tie them in. Just we're gonna make one drop of super glue before that so we're not gonna have any thread rats thread wraps slipping here. And we're gonna just do the same like we did previous here. So kind of spread them around as much as possible. Try not to get that bucktail fibers in that. Try to spread them around, something like that. We're not running that many now, so you can usually actually just fold them Make sure that they come in into the direction we want them to have them. Keep that there. There we go. Put some pressure to that thread. So now we got the flashable basically spread evenly around onto like 180 degrees from this side to this side. I'm not usually running too much flashable on the belly. I'm mostly running it on the top. Um, Put that hair clamp on again, and then we're gonna put some glue, and we're gonna be ready for the last part of um, buck tape. That's gonna be olive. So we're just gonna do exactly like we did with the uh, previous one, the pink here, but we're gonna do a nice olive color. Still running the bucktail from the lower part of the tail. Trying to take all the short fibers out just as normal. And here you might need to adjust the amount of bucktail depending on how much space you still have. Um, still pretty good here. You need to have that 
two millimeters for the disc, but you also want to press it against the duck bucktail, so you don't want to have too much space either. But we're gonna do this. We're gonna leave around one and a half to two centimeters. We're gonna try to get all those fibers evenly around here. Make that good pull. Just like we did with the previous one. Try to get that olive secured and all around the head here. That's gonna kind of create that little bit darker head to that rainbow pattern. So we're gonna work a little bit towards the hook eye again with the thread. And um, basically the uh, fly is almost done here. I'm just gonna push that last fiber fibers back. Give them a little bit push here. Once again, work with the thread towards the front and then make a nice and even base to glue this foam disc here. Something like that. Just take your whip finish tool here and we make a few turns. Let's with that one. So there we have a basically a, a very good water pushing fly already, but now we're just going to be able to increase that a lot. So it's a lot of bucktail, a lot of flash, a lot of material, and it's going to be really fun to cast. <laughs> so we have um, found a really good foam. This is a much more uh, stiffer foam, um, a higher density foam. If you go for your normal uh, sheets of foam, it's a little bit too soft. Um, we have had them cut them into cylinders and also we actually have it actually becomes like markings here But they're not made for that, but We want to try to make a disc that is around two millimeters thick um, So get a little eraser uh, It's hard to do this with a scissor and try to get a try to cut a disc here by just gently turning this around here it's actually not that hard, but it's really hard to cut this out from a foam sheet. <laughs> so there we have a foam disc, it's around two millimeters. And that's what we're going to push in the front here. Uh, just to be able to get that straight water pressure. If you look to the fly, uh, or to the lure slash fly called Mira's Mouse, they have a very straight epoxy head, uh, which is really, really creating that water pressure. Uh, the bulkheads are doing that too, but a lot of the water is sipping through the bucktail. So I wanted that really, really uh, straight uh, place where the water would push and creating that water to go around it. And it's been working really, really well. So foam disc, try to get a hole in the middle here. Somehow in secured somewhere in the middle, like that. And just take your dubbing needle. And then you go with something that is a little bit thicker. So this is like a two millimeter or one and a half millimeter end of a whip finish, but you can do whatever. And then we're going to just kind of secure this on here. I'm just gonna test so it's good. So now we have the space we want here. Uh, so we have, we're not lacking our space, but we still have a good place there. So basically where we are, I want to trim these fibers a little bit so we get a nice overflow to the other fibers. So, but first we're going to, to glue this on. Just gonna put one little drop of super glue here so we don't get the thread to open. But don't glue with too much super glue here because it's better if you get the epoxy down into the thread and into the material. It just becomes much, much stronger. So five minute epoxy. We're gonna have a piece of paper, which I don't know where I can do. Oh, we have that somewhere. Piece of paper. Epoxy. We don't need a lot here, so we just need a kind of a drop. It's cold in Sweden, so the epoxy is cold which is not really the good stuff, but 
just have to live with that. Even amount here. Just gonna mix those together. Super fun to watch this. See if I have a, take a lighter and then just make that epoxy become a little bit warm, not too much because it becomes much more, um, uh, it becomes the viscosity, I don't know what's called in English, but at least the, um, how it moves, it becomes so much easier to move. It doesn't become that thick and it actually grabs the material much better. So we're gonna use one of these hair clamps again to get that material away. So we're gonna kind of get some epoxy around here. You don't have to be afraid of all at all if you get epoxy up in the bucktail. Actually, I prefer if I do because then you're basically going to then you're going to glue this disc to the material and it just becomes going to become much stronger fly. So, so you can see I have epoxy all around here pushing up a little bit in the epoxy and then I'm just going to push this over like this and then I can open this so just pull some of these fibers so it's nice and secured against this and then we just have to um, make this uh, dry for five minutes and then we're going to paint it so stay tuned That was probably a much faster five minutes for you than it was for us, but uh, now it's done here. So uh, the epoxy has cured, uh, or at least as much so we can paint it. So I'm gonna take this away from the vise. So it's a little bit easier to handle. And then we're going to coat this whole disc here with um, this uh, really good UV glue called Gulf from our friends over in Finland. It's a quite new brand on the market but it's really, really good. It's low smell, no tackiness at all. And it's just awesome stuff. And these guys are crazy fly tires and they're just coming up with new cool stuff the whole time. So go check it out. So I'm not using a hard um, resin here uh, or epoxy because I want this to be a little bit more durable, you know, when you have fish uh, slamming this and stuff like that. So if you're using a, a very hard, cure here, you're going to or a hard resin or epoxy or whatever, it, it's easy to crack it, you know, so I want something that's a little bit flexi flexible. So we're going to paint this after I put the first coat on here. So what I want to do here is I just want to coat this whole disc here, also the side here. What this does, it actually creates a little bit more weight to it. Uh, and also makes the surface a little bit slick, which helps the water to um, pass it a little bit easier. I've kind of played with them, coated or not, or glued or not. And um, uh, I like the ones that are um, finished with um, uh, UV glue better because they are slightly heavier. So the balance of the fly becomes uh, better in my opinion. And it also just gives an all-around better look and feeling to the fly. So I have a thin layer here. So we're just gonna cure that a few seconds here. Just gonna go a fast turnaround so make sure that the glue is set. And then I'm basically just gonna work this a little bit slower around here. So I make sure that all, all sides and all resin is getting that UV glue, that's done, completely tack free. Uh, so now we're gonna paint this a little bit. I just wanna have, because this white disc probably works really well too, but I just wanna get a little bit of rainbow feeling to it. So we're just gonna add some, this is just a marker you buy, can buy in any basically uh, drawing stores. This is a neon fluorescent marker, uh, which just adds that 
fluorescent feeling to it. So just make like a like a ribbon or a side light of fluorescent pink. And then we're gonna run some olive here on the top. So it basically adds to the olive back and the feeling of the fly here. And then we're just gonna paint this top here olive too because otherwise that white is going to bother you the whole time when you're fishing with it, so. Just a little bit sloppy, but uh, a nice uh, different shade to it. And then we're just gonna put a super thin layer of Flexman again over this, but now I'm just gonna run it over where I painted, just to secure the paint. Uh, and also get a little bit like a 3D depth over it. Something like that. And then we're just gonna give that a quick shine with the UV lamp again here. So it hardens and it makes it really strong and durable. So, so now what you do is you still have the flexibility of this, but you still have the, uh, the strength of, of the glue. Uh, so the only thing I want to do now is kind of taper these last bucktail fibers here. So it just makes the general feeling of the fly looking a little bit better. And then we're just gonna throw a tail on to it and it's ready to go. So what I do here is now is I kind of, you can put it in the vise or you can hold it in your hand. And maybe it's easy to put it in the vise for you guys to see how we do this. Push it over like that. So I just want these to be kind of tapered uh, with the hair and also with the disc in front here. So I kind of just lay this, the scissor onto it here and I go around the whole collar here, just so they don't stick up that much because they don't make any difference fishing wise. Just like I said previously, you don't have to be that fussy with this because they're going to get quite chewed up quite fast, but yeah, I'm happy with that. I'm not going to overdo this. I'm just going to steal this pink. This is an XXL dragon tail to it. Um, if you're going to run that setup, you're definitely going to need a 10 weight to cast these, but uh, if you run a a normal XL tail to it, you're gonna be really good casting them. They're not as hard to cast as you would think. They're actually quite easy to cast um, uh, because they kind of slim down when you get them a little bit wet. But this is a really, really, really good pattern. Um, we have a lot of fluorescent inlays here. So we have the glow in the dark. We have that fluorescent white and pink bucktail. And of course we have that little bit touch of fluorescent in the front here. I fish these 90% roly poly. I like to put a like a 0 0.6 or 0 0.8. Uh, we have what we call a Bauer Pike bead. It's a little bit like a small, small bead with a little bit uh, thicker hole inside, so you can push it on your leader. Um, if you fish that in front of it, and when you stop the fly, it doesn't kind of. Otherwise, it has a tendency to float up a little bit with the surface, with the with the tip here. And I want it to stay 100% level or just drop down slowly. So. A small bead if you want to have it, if you want to stop the fly, if you're just going to fish this roly poly and without stops, you don't have to push anything in front of it. So there you have one badass fly, fish it quite uh, high up in the surface, even on quite deep water, 
because it makes such a good footprint up in the surface. So the fish will come from the bottom and take it. And of course we will give this fly away to one of you guys. So within one week after we release the video, we're going to have a raffle and give this fly out to you. So leave a comment and please follow us on Instagram, Nicholas Bauer or Fly Dressing. And of course, Canal Gratis. And um, good luck guys. Have fun tying it and catch a big one on it.